In this video, we're going to take a look at the Mosaic Optimizer. So the Mosaic Optimizer is what you're going to use to nest jobs and export G-code for a CNC machine. So what we're going to do in this video is take a look at the different features of the Mosaic Optimizer. And what you'll see after watching this video is what makes Mosaic the best nesting solution in the cabinet making industry. Okay, in this video, we're going to take a real quick fly through of the Mosaic Optimizer and the different functions and features. I'm going to show you the real fast version over a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to break that down and much slower and show you all of the features over a much longer period. So if you just wanted to get in and see what is this all about, what does it do, how does it work, watch the first couple of minutes. If you want to see the whole thing and you want to really get a good idea of what I'm getting when I'm getting the Mosaic Optimizer, stick around, watch the whole video. I'm sure you'll get lots out of it. So let's dive in. On this first page here, we've got the material tab where we can set our sheet size for our various materials that come through from Mosaic. We can also add offcuts or remnants. Really cool, you can have a library of these things, but you can also add manual ones on the fly. So I can simply say I've got a piece that's 600 by two meters and then add that in. That way Mosaic can use that in my optimization. I can go to my parts list and on my parts list here, I can see every component that's in my job. I can sort that via width. I can sort that via length. I can sort that via item number or cabinet number to make it easy for me to find certain components. I can also grab components there and simply press to edit those components. And I can see the operations make changes, hide operations, delete operations, add operations, change the shape of my components. Lots you can do there. Again, I'm going to go through that much slower in the full version of this video. So keep watching. But for the flyover part of this video, let's just go through and, and show you this in a real quick overview. I'm going to jump in and go to my optimize page here. I'm going to choose my machine. Uh, quick note, machines are free. You can add more machines, add post processes free of charge. Tool sets here, tool sets control what is being optimized, what tools I'm, getting, I'm going to use when I'm optimizing. And then I'm going to go over here and choose to optimize mm. that. I'm going to re-optimize that and go through and let Mosaic do its thing. You can see the pattern number and count number down here. So we're up to sheet number 10. It happens really quickly. It optimizes components very fast. You can see how quickly it's processing and crunching those numbers as it goes through. We've got 20 sheets optimized here. It's showing me all my 20 sheets there. I can go through and choose um, each sheet. I can dive into a sheet and add offcuts really easily. So I can create these remnants and they can be saved into a library if I'd like. Um, you can edit that as you go. Again, dive into sheets, create remnants, create offcuts. So once you're happy with your sheet layout here, you can just simply press generate G-code and OK, and that's going to export the G-code for those sheets. So you can see there I've got 19 sheets that have been created. I already had a sheet marked as cuts, so that's why I'm seeing 19 sheets instead of 20. You'll see why later in this video. For those sheets, I can even click into one of them and view the G-code if I like. Um, you can edit the G-code by editing the post-processor. Um, if you've subscribed to the NBN label option, you'll have the label tab here and you can click on that and simply print out a label or print out your patterns. I'm going to show you that in much more detail further along in this video. But that's it. That's from start to finish. That's the Mosaic Optimizer. It's very quick and easy to fly through these options to quickly nest out jobs and jump in and create G-code. I'm going to show you things in this video like flip side machining where we're going to take a look at how to machine both sides of a sheet. I'm going to show you how to edit individual sheets, edit individual patterns, edit the individual components. I'm going to show you how to add custom operations. I'm going to show you how the labeling works and how the G-code and pattern optimizing works. Show you a few tips and tricks as well so you can get a really good feel for what the Mosaic Optimizer does and if it's going to be beneficial for your business. So stick around and watch the full video. If you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and reach out if you have any questions about Mosaic. We're here to help. My name is David Carr. I'm from CADMATE. We're the representatives of Mosaic Software in Australia and New Zealand. If you're within that region and you'd like to have a chat with us, please reach out. You can get us via email on help at cadmate.com.au or you can reach us via phone as well. All our details are on our website, www.cadmate.com.au. All right, so let's get into it and take a look now at this in much more detail. We're going to start here on the material tab. So the first thing that you'll see when you bring jobs into the optimizer is that the materials for that job get loaded in automatically and it will have the default settings according to your material library in Mosaic. So we're going to have the ability here to change the width and length of the sheet and also change the trims, which is the border around the sheet. We can slow down the feed rate by a certain percentage and also change the comment of the material. One of the really cool features here on this page is the ability to add remnants. So remnants are like offcuts um, of materials that you might have laying around the factory. And you've got the ability here to simply just either select them from a library of remnants, which we're going to take a look at after we nest this job. I'll show you how to create a remnant and how you can add that to your library for future use. But you can also just add one on the fly. You just click the add remnant button. And then on the screen here, you can simply change the size. So I could say that I've got a remnant in my factory that's only 600 wide by two meters long. 
And by simply putting that in there, that's now available to use in this job. And down the bottom here, you've got a bit of control over how you'd like to use this. So you've got the ability to say that you would like to use the remnant first, meaning that I want to use that piece up regardless of whether it helps the optimization or not. Um, or you can say the option here that you only want to use it if it helps the optimization. So that will let Mosaic check and see if that's actually going to be beneficial and making, making sure that you're not going to end up with a bigger offcut in the factory. And the last option there is just to say that you don't want to use the remnants on this particular job. So you've got three, three options of how you might want to interact with them. I'm going to let it, leave it there and only use it if it helps and we'll take a look and see what happens. So what we're looking at here is the material, the whiteboard, um, white HMR 16mm. I've also got another material here for my doors, which is white satin 18mm. And again, I can control the same things there. So maybe I'm going to run satin on a bigger material. I can simply change that there. So coming across then from the material tab, we move across to the parts category. So again, I'm going to flick back to the whiteboard to start with, and then we're going to take a look at both materials shortly. So I'm going to go to the parts category here. And then in the parts list here, we can see a breakdown. Again, I can change the material in this area. I can also import additional parts or export parts out, which is going to be really beneficial if you want to export your parts, perhaps for a beam saw or something along those lines. You've got different options there of how you can export out to different softwares. So looking at the parts list here, I've got the ability to see my parts. So I can see a quick preview of my parts, which makes it really easy to flow through and identify my parts. I can see the quantity of the part. I can also sort via these categories here. So I can click on the name category there, and that links all my parts or groups all my parts together by name, making it, again, easier to find the certain part that I'm looking for. Coming across, something that I like to do is to simply click on the width column there to sort that ascending, where I can have it starting with the smallest size first, ascending down to the largest size, or I could flip, flip that around and go descending, starting with the largest width part going down to my smallest. So something I like to check is what the smallest part is that's come through to this job to see if I'd like to maybe to change that here because the beautiful thing here is that you've got the ability to simply just edit this part. I can click on the part, I can simply double click in there and change the size if I'd like to change the size, or I could click to edit the shape or edit the operations. So everything's editable at this point, which is really nice. Okay, moving across, you've got the same thing on the length there. So I can simply sort via the length ascending or click that again to sort via the length descending. And it's just showing me the highlighted part that I had there. That's the blue line indicated down the bottom here. I can also sort via banding, color, item number. So every individual part in Mosaic is referenced here in the optimizer with a unique item number. That's really beneficial if there was a part damaged or a dropped part or something like that that needed to be remanufactured. Um, you can simply check the item number on the label and you can say, okay, I need to remake item number 21. So you simply come down here and find item number 21 and then that part could be added as a remake. And I'm going to show you that feature later in this video too. Coming across then, you can also sort via cabinet number or pattern number. The pattern number is the sheet number that that part ended up on. And we're going to take a look at that once we've actually gone through and nested this completely. You do have the run number and cut number, so once you've exported G-code, those two will make more sense. So next we're going to take a look at the Optimize tab. So I'm going to go across and click on Optimize, and this is where you've got the ability to select the machine that you're using. So with the machines, you have the ability to select different styles of machines. So it can be a CNC router, it can be a table saw, which in Australia we refer to as a panel saw, but in the, the States and other parts of the world, it's called a table saw. Um, you've also got a panel saw, which in Australia we refer to that as a vertical saw or a wall saw. Um, in the States, that's referred to as a panel saw. And then we come down to the last option here, a CNC router, which would be the primary choice for most people. Um, the beautiful thing in Mosaic is that you can create as many different uh, machines as you like. Post processes are free of charge, which is really nice. So if we go into libraries and machines, you'll have the ability there to add machines and import and export out machines as well. So you can simply create machines as you go and then link them. If you do have a CNC machine or you change CNC machines, you can simply email us and request a post processor and we can email you that free of charge. We also offer services to help you get them integrated and connected to make that process nice and easy for you. So let's take a look then at Toolset. So Toolset's the ability here to choose different groups of tools. So you might have a set of tools on your machine that's designed for maybe nesting and cutting, run of the mill sort of stuff. And then you might have a separate group of tools that you swap in when you want to do certain door styles. So the ability here is you can create different groups of tools. That way, you know, if your, your machine's limited to say eight tools, you might, you might carry 20 different tools in your kit and you want to swap in and out different tools at different times. You can create these tool sets that are groups of tools that make it nice and easy for you to tell Mosaic which 
tool you're going to have loaded into the machine to cut this specific job. Common use for that would be to identify maybe a cutting tool specifically for HMR or particle board versus a cutting tool that you want to use on MDF. So common common practice here would be to use a three-wing compression cutter for HMR and a two-wing compression cutter for MDF. So you can nominate them in the tool sets here by just simply telling Mosaic what you're doing there. We often separate out 25 mil and thicker materials um, by using a 12 mil compression cutter or a half inch compression cutter in that example. Coming down then, you've got the ability to set a part spacing. So this is the gap between your parts when you nest the parts out. You want to allow about two mil more than your tool diameter. So if your tool's a 10 mil compression cutter, you'd want to allow about 12 mil there for your part spacing. On the right hand side of the screen here, we have the ability to choose the optimization quality. So you can flick from going uh, a very fast estimate through to good, better and best. Best will take the longest to produce the optimization pattern, but it may end up with a better outcome because it's going to check more scenarios as it goes through and nests that job. You've also got a few unique um, options here, which we're going to take a look at as well. You've got the ability to sequence by cabinet number. So if you're in a rush to get a job out and you want to make sure that the, the guys are ready to start assembling the job as soon as they come off the machine, you can sequence by a cabinet number, which means all of the cabinet number one components are going to end up on the first sheet or first multiple sheets, depending on how many parts are in that cabinet. And then it's going to move on to cabinet number two. So if it fills up, say, the first half of the sheet with cabinet one, it'll fill up the remaining half with cabinet two and then flow onto the second sheet from there. So the idea there as you're cutting the job, you can have all the parts come off and that cabinet's components are all cut, ready to go through your edge bander and into the assembly sequence. So making it easy or you guys can start knocking it up as you're cutting it. So if you're in a real rush, that's a really, really good option to tick that on and sequence via those cabinet numbers. The next option there is one of my favorites, which is the ability to sequence flip side parts first. So if you don't know about flip side machining, it's the ability to machine both sides of the sheet. So Imagine you're doing something like a shaker door where you want to drill the hinge holes on the back of the door and then flip the entire sheet over, route out the shaker pattern and then cut the door out. So when it comes off the machine, it's completely done, holes are drilled and the face of the door has been routed. When you do six face nesting or flip side nesting, what you're going to find is that sometimes it can be a bit of a pain because the process can take a bit longer to manufacture, um, especially if all your parts are scattered throughout multiple sheets. So what Mosaic does there, it gives you the choice to sequence those parts first, meaning it'll take it and maybe instead of scattering them across 12 different sheets, it's going to narrow it down to three or four sheets, which makes it quicker because you're flipping less of the sheets. So that's a really nice feature and really nice function on the flip side. Coming down, then you've got the ability to batch optimize. That option there gives you the choice of basically optimizing both the materials in one hit, or if you've got 10 materials in the job, you can do all 10 materials at the same time. Um, otherwise, you can you can do them separately. Either way is perfectly fine, but it's just got the choice there to try and speed up your process. Well, the last option there is to optimize only one particular part at a time. So coming across on the right-hand side of the screen here, we've got the ability to press optimize. That's going to go through and nest our patterns out, um, or we can choose a pattern and interact with it. I'm going to show you both and show you the differences here. And we've also got the ability to choose the cutout options. That's going to allow us to choose how we want to cut our parts out. So we've got the ability to turn on different ramp in and ramp out options, helical and helical out. We can change the cut direction. We can have it roll around the corners. We can also change how we handle small parts, whether we're doing tab in or we're onion skinning. Uh, we can define small part area sizes. We can also tell it to pocket out waste areas. So if you've got really small wasteful areas on the sheet that you want to make sure they don't flick out and fly out at someone and, and damage potentially someone or something, you can tell it to pocket that and turn it to dust, which is a really nice feature. Um, you can also alter your onion skin thickness and offset there. So one of the really nice things I love about Mosaic is the integrated help there. So we can just press the question mark and that's going to open up a PDF. It's going to show us pretty much exactly these options and it's going to walk through and show us them really clearly, uh, very visually laid out there. So you can see the differences between the different settings. Simply just scroll through, have a read of these options, and then you'll get a pretty good idea of what you might want to change. So everything pretty much is really well documented and clear and easy to understand just at the click of a button. So we're going to close out of there now and return back. I'm going to take a look at the data options. So a dado basically is a groove or a rebate. Think of it like a mortise and tenon or a dado as it's called in the States. And with the dados, you've got the ability to have it automatically run past by the radius of the tool to make sure that you end up with, a, uh, I guess, a, a, a route that is a groove that is wide enough for a tenon to fit in. 
Um, you can also do this T-bone style or a dog bone style. Again, just different styles of making sure that a square component can fit into a square hole, not a round hole. Think of it like that. Okay, let's take a look now at the optimizing. So we're gonna press the optimize button. One of the things you'll see, I'm gonna just say, yep, I'm gonna redo that because I had it done previously before. And what you'll see is it's really fast at generating these patterns. So it's looking at all the ways it can lay this out. You're gonna see the, the 600 by two meter part flash up there. And you can see how quick the, quickly that's generated 20 sheets of boards for us there. So what we've seen here on the first screen is the first 12 patterns. And then we're gonna go through and press next. And we're gonna see the remaining patterns. So that's pattern number 13 through to 20. And on the first side of the sheet there, we've seen pattern one through to 12. So if we scroll across to the second page, so it did decide to use the remnant there and that's come up as pattern number 14. You can clearly see that that's a different size. You can also click into the patterns just by clicking on that pattern. It zooms in and shows you exactly what's going on that pattern, shows me the size of the sheet um, and will show me the components on the sheet. So from there, if you want to go across to the next sheet, you can always use your arrows and, and flick through the sheets like this, or you can press the button here that to view all the patterns and go back out and see them. So. Everything is really simple and easy to navigate, and that's something that's common throughout Mosaic. It's really a very user-friendly program, something that's very easy to pick up and learn. So what we're going to take a look at now is going back to the Optimize page, and I'm going to show you the other option there, which is called Choose a Pattern. That's something that's unique to Mosaic. It gives you the ability to interact with the program as it's generating these patterns. So it's going to go through and, and do all the thinking here and then present you with options. It's going to say, hey, for, for sheet number 14, which layout do you prefer? And it tells you how, you how much yield percentage of the sheet that it's using, how many components made it onto that sheet. So you can look at the options and say, I prefer pattern A. And then it's going to go, okay, for pattern for sheet 15, which do you prefer? I'm going to choose A. Again, probably A. So it's just laying out the different options to show you what options you have. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go with the option of A there again. And this time I prefer the look of sheet B. So I'm going to choose B. And then again, on the last sheet here, it's an option to see which you'd prefer. I'm going to go with B in this choice. And then lastly, I'm going to choose pattern A in this example. So it gives you the ability just to have a bit of simple, quick interaction to pick which pattern you prefer the most. That's something that's unique to Mosaic and a, and a nice feature. So now what we're going to take a look at is how you can edit and manipulate things even after it's been nested. So let's say we're on one of the sheets here and I'm going to dive into sheet pattern number two. And what we can see really clearly indicated on the screen is we can see where the edge banding is. So you can see that there's an edge banding indication here showing me that this part needs to be edged along this top edge here. This part needs to be edged along all four edges. So you can clearly see that. Um, so if you didn't want to use stickers or labels, you could just use this and print these patterns out and then mark that on your sheet manually. However, I definitely recommend labels because it's, a, it's going to make the entire process much easier and smoother as it flows through your factory. But if you're a very small manufacturer that's not doing many components, maybe labeling is not the right option for you. But for most people that are manufacturing kitchens or anything with a lot of componentry, you really want to make sure that you add the labeling option on. And I'm going to show you the labels later on in this video. So let's take a look now at how we can edit one of these components. Let's say we decided that we wanted to change something about this. I'm going to click on this back here and I'm going to press edit part. What I can see is that it's presenting me with a choice of choosing where the X and Y position of that part is. So I can change that if I want. I can rotate it if I'd like. I can flip it over, I can delete the part, I can move it to a remake bin, which we're going to take a look at shortly as well after we've generated G-code. I can move it up across the sheet, bump it up and down, and I can change the, the small part handling, or I can tell it, hey, I want to make sure this part is using my small part handling, which is a really nice feature just to override and say this part definitely needs that function. Of course, this is very large parts, so I wouldn't do it for this particular component. But one of the nice things here is I can also press edit shape, which brings up the standard mosaic shape and operations editor. So I can jump into the operations here and I can make a change. Maybe I want to grab these shelf holes and turn them off. So I could grab them there and press the hide function to remove them from the part. I could also add any various other number of operations into the screen here. So it's, so it's very easy at this stage to make a change where you'd want to edit drilling, add drilling, edit routing, add routing, change the shape, change the part. You've got a lot of functionality even after you've nested the job. So I'm going to click OK and jump out of there, and I'm going to go back to view all patterns. 
Uh, that's just showing me that part that's highlighted. One of the nice things is if I want to go back and find a certain component and to see where it landed on this nest, I can go back to my parts list and I can simply sort by that item number or cabinet number. You might say, look, it's cabinet number 35. So I'd scroll down and find cabinet 35 and you might say it's the left end that I'm looking for. So it's really easy to sort by that and okay, find the 35th component or the 35 cupboard number and the left hand end and then click on patterns and I can scroll across and I can see the highlighted part. It also showed me back there on the parts tab that this landed on pattern number 13. So it's really easily identifiable as to where components have landed. One of the things I love the most about the optimizer here is the ability to edit sheets. So I can jump in here and I might look at this and say, well, you know what, I might try and turn this into an offcut, or maybe I want to turn this part around and interact with it a little bit. So I might click on that and say, look, I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees. Okay. And then if I grab that part and I've moved it around, so you can just pick it up and drag it around. I might even then just say, okay, look, I want it to snap into place by my part spacing on the left here and on the bottom here. So I can simply right click on that and say, bump left, bump down, hit okay. And it's going to snap into place. So it's these features that make it very user friendly and easy for you to operate. Now, looking at that, I don't want to have a, a weird L-shaped piece that comes off my machine because it's going to be harder for me to handle. So I'm going to simply click in the area here and decide that I want to turn that into an offcut. So depending on where you click, Mosaic will present you with different options. So I can get out of there and click closer to the part over here and it's going to say, okay, would you like this whole section there to be an offcut? And it tells you the size and this is where you can create a remnant. So I'm going to say, look, I want to create that as a remnant. I also want to save it into my remnant library so Mosaic knows about it and I can use that on future jobs. You can give that a particular name if you like or a comment um, and if you do get the labeling option that that can actually have a label printed out for that so that way it gets sorted the guys understand what it's for and understand to put it in the rack for future use. So I can hit OK there. Now with this one there I, I might still want to clean that up or cut that square because I might want to use that for something so again Depending on where you click, you get presented with different options. I can simply say I want to cut that, but I might not want to save that into my library. I might just want to cut it and have it in my in my shop available to use for some, some purpose, like maybe I'm going to use it for a rail or something like that, um, or potentially a kickboard or something along those lines. Again, I can click onto my next sheet there, and I can do the same thing. I could reorder these, restack these. I might even decide, look, you know, I'm going to move that part there. I'm going to turn this around by 90 degrees, and I'm going to grab this one and say bump it left and down snap it into place. I prefer that layout personally. So then I'm going to click up here and say, look, I want to cut that as a remnant and I want to cut that as a remnant. Uh, with this remnant, I'm actually going to cut it and save it into my library as well. So by doing that, you've had a real quick interaction with Mosaic to tell it how you prefer to tidy these things up and, and get it ready for manufacturing. So it's just a really simple, easy to use uh, feature there that makes the world a difference once you're cutting and flowing these rings through your factory. You know, by just taking that time to add a few remnants and change the layout of the last couple of sheets, it just it gives you the ability to do those things simply and quickly, which really makes a big difference to the end outcome. Okay, so once you've done interacting with so once you're done interacting with the nest and you're ready to export your G code, all you need to do here is press generate G code and OK. And that's going to export the g-code to your computer so what we can see here is that it says okay it's exported 20 g-code files so what you'll see then listed on each sheet is the run number and the pattern number so the run number is like a revision number it just tells you that this is the first time you've exported g-code for these sheets and that's run number one if we take a look on the g-code tab here you'll see all the individual bits of code exported out so I've exported code for a Syntec machine here, which is an NC file. I'm going to click on that file and click view G code file. That's going to open up and show me the G code. Now this G code would be different for every different type of or brand of CNC machine. Some machines run simple NC code. Others run a more complicated NC code. Um, others run a more macro orientated type of code. Um, so Mosaic does provide the post processors free of charge. You just need the, to request the post specifically for your machine. So you can simply email us and just tell us what your machine is and we can send you out a post processor to make it nice and easy for you to integrate with your machine. We also offer a free one hour online machine connection session where we can help you integrate a post processor and help you set up a few tools and run a test to make sure that your machine is running smoothly.
One of the beautiful things about Mosaic is that these posts are editable um, and they're simple text files. So it just means that you can jump in and make changes if you know how, um, or we can help you do that. Uh, most machinery companies love that because if they request a change, it happens very quickly and easily. For me to edit this post, it's very simple. I can just go into my machine library. I can click on my machine and jump in to edit the post processor. And that brings up a text box here of the post layout, which I can simply change. So let's say on the last line here, I wanted to change the way my machine offloads and onloads. Um, for this particular Syntec machine, it's controlled by an M98 code, which just says the 406 is telling it to onload and offload. If I wanted to change that just to loading or, or unloading, I can change that to a 407 and that's going to change the output. So when you want to make simple changes or if you're getting your machine installed and your technician requests an M code or a change here and there, it is pretty easy for us to jump in and make those changes or you can do it yourself too and just simply save that file and then jump back out. So it is pretty easy to get into the post processor and make some changes. So let's jump back then to the G code page and we'll take a look at a couple of more features of this optimizer. So what we're going to do is jump back to the patterns tab here and I'm going to show you the remake feature. So let's jump in and take a look at that. I'm going to go through to the parts tab because really realistically the way this would work, a guy in your factory would say, Hey, you know, there was a part that I dropped or there's a part that got damaged and I need to remake that part. What you're going to do is ask them to check on the sticker what the part was. And according to that sticker or label, they're going to say, okay, it was part number 57. So you're going to scroll through this list. I'm going to sort via item number here and I'm going to scroll and find number 57. So I found 57. It happens to be an adjustable shelf. Okay. And then I can take that one there. I can go and see that it's landed on pattern number 14. So if I go across to my patterns and I find pattern 14. That part's automatically highlighted. I'm going to simply right click on that and say move to remake bin. It very clearly indicates on the screen that that part is a remake and you need to do something with it. It also appears down here on the left hand side in your remake bin, making it very easy for you to know that that's the part that you need to remake somewhere else. Now, if you haven't cut all these sheets, say you haven't cut sheet 20, you can simply remove the remnants and add it to sheet 20. Or if you have completed the job fully and you just want to add a blank sheet for this to this part to be remade, you can simply click add sheet and there's just a blank sheet. I can take the remake part and drag it and drop it onto the screen. Again, I can do the same thing. I can just say, I want to rotate it down and maybe bump it into position. And that will be that part down there in that corner. Um, if you weren't going to use a full sheet and you just wanted to tell the guys throw an off cut on the machine, you can press this button here, edit sheet and press make minimum size. And it's going to tell you the smallest sheet size that you can use to cut that component making it nice and easy for the guys to know what size offcut to look for in the factory. Another way that you can handle remakes would be the ability to add them into the next job that you're going to manufacture. And that's really cool. So you can come in here and say, okay, this part needs to be remade. So I'm going to right click on that one and go move to remake bin. Maybe there's a few components that you're going to remake, add them to your remake bin. And then in your remake bin on the side here, you can simply press save to library. And then it saves those remakes into a remake library. So that way, the next job that you open up in Mosaic, if you want to just go to the remake library, you can simply select those components and press add parts to current job. And that simply adds those parts into the current job with a note to say that they were from a different job name and that job name will still appear on the label. And then you can simply optimize those parts in with your next job. So it makes it really easy to basically say, okay, next kitchen I'm going to do or the next job I'm going to put through, I'm going to add these parts into that to save me having to just add a, a blank sheet or an off cut in the factory. Coming back to the patterns tab, we'll take a look at a few more features. So one thing, once you've nested these sheets, it's going to show you down here um, a, a barcode where you can scan that. If you've got a scanner on your CNC machine, it also tells you what the pattern number is and what the job name is. So you can see this G code has been created as example job. That's my job name. White HMR, that's my material, 16 mil or sheet number 15, revision number one and it's a .nc file. The part space in there was 12 mil, and the tools needed to manufacture this sheet is in tool one, I'm expecting to see a three wing, 10 millimeter three wing compression cutter. So one of the really nice features there is that those things do appear on the printout. So if I wanted to just go out here and say, look, let's print all of this. So I'm gonna say, I wanna just print all of my whiteboard for the moment and hit okay. And I'm just gonna print that to PDF so I can open it up on the screen here and show you this. 
So I'm just going to call this patterns, save that, and then I'll open it up and show you what I'm looking at. So let's go ahead and open that one up. So what we're seeing there is a layout. I'm going to go and show you this on one page. So we're seeing here um, the company name listed at the top, your job name, material name, the machine name. Also that barcode comes through there with the job, with the file name for the G code, the tools that are listed. I really love that it's got the tools listed there because if you are swapping tools in and out of a machine that only holds a certain amount of tools, it's nice to see what we're expecting to see in that particular tool holder. So if we're expecting to see a compression cutter in that tool holder and you happen to have a conic tool or something else loaded into that tool holder, you'll need to know that you have to swap it out before running this program. It also tells us some safety limits there. So it's telling me that at the highest travel, it's 36.5 millimeters above your material and 0.3 millimeters below the material into the scoreboard. So nice safety check there. It also tells me the minimum X travel and the maximum X travel, as well as the minimum X or the Y movement and the maximum Y movement. So I can see what my minimum maximum travels are to make sure I'm not gonna exceed this machine's limitations. Coming down then we've got a picture of the sheet again with those edge banding indications and then a breakdown of a table there showing me my part numbers, my part names, width, length, edge banding information, the cabinet number, and any comments that were added to those parts in Mosaic. So really clearly laid out. And again, you can scroll through those different sheets. If we get right down to that last sheet there, you'll see that this sheet size is clearly listed here as well. So you can see the part size listed and the sheet size listed there. So we know what we need to find there to manufacture that part. Okay, so I'm gonna return out of there back to Mosaic and take a look at a couple more features. Okay, so next I'm gonna go back to the optimizer and take a look at how to nest using the sequence of the cabinet number first. So I'm going to click on the sequence by cabinet number and I'm going to click optimize there. And yep, I'm going to delete everything and redo it um, just so I can optimize that by cabinet number. Now what you're going to see here is that it's used 22 sheets. So it's of course going to take more materials if you're optimizing by a cabinet number. So the optimization and sequence is not going to be as good doing it that way. But the nice thing is all the components for cabinet number one are going to end up on the first sheet or cabinet number two in my case, because there's no cabinet number one in this particular job um, that had been removed or deleted after the job was locked. Um, so there's various ways that you can control the cabinet number in, um, but important to know that you can easily sequence via cabinet number there. Um, I'm gonna turn that one off there. And for the flip side parts, I'm gonna show you that on the doors in a second. So let's go ahead and just re-optimize that back to standard. Okay, so now that's optimized, let's go ahead and take a look at the labeling feature. So we're going to go across here to labels and we're going to take a look at labels. So to do this, I might jump into one of the sheets here and show you how this works. So we're going to click on one of these um, parts and I'm going to click here to let's set, let's set our label up first. I'm just going to go to label settings. Now you can set your label design here. The design can be done back on the mosaic side. Now I will note that this whole labeling tab, you do require the purchase of Mosaic NBM labels add-on, which is $15 a month or 15 US dollars a month extra. Uh, well worth the price there because it's going to give you this entire ability here that we're going to see in this video. So we want to start with the label template there. That's going to be the design of the label that we're going to use. Again, that's editable back on the Mosaic side. In the label printer, we can choose the printer that we're going to use. So if you have like a a roll printer selected, um, you'd go ahead and choose that roll printer and then you would have this on roll. And then by doing that, you know, you can print individual labels at a time. So I can click on this part here and press view label. It's gonna show me the label design and I can print that out or I can just press print label and then it'll print straight to my roll printer. Um, if you're using a regular A4 or a regular sheet printer, um, you can simply go into the label settings there and configure this. I'm gonna do this to PDF so I can show you on the screen and I'm gonna set this up as a custom sheet. You know, for me, I'm going to set that to an A4 size there. I'd do this as a, let's say, four rows and two columns, which is an eight per page sheet. I can enter my width here in inches, so it's a four inch by 2.8 inch label. Um, you can convert that from millimeters to inches if you need to. I'm going to give it about a 0.2 of an inch um, border all the way around. Again, convert that from millimeters to inches. That's around about um, four or five mil. I'm going to hit OK there and apply. And then I'm going to close out of there and I'm going to go back here. And if I just want to print this one sheet, I can press print all and it's just going to print that one sheet. Otherwise, if I want to print all the sheets, I just simply press print all while looking at all the patterns. And then it's going to print all of these sheets out. I'm going to give this a name. So I'm just going to call this my labels. And then I'm going to open that up and show you what that looks like. 
Okay, so now that you, they've been printed, you can see that they've turned green, just an indication to show you that they've all been printed out. I'm gonna open this up and show you what this looks like. So as we can see here again, I'm gonna change that to show one full page. So we can see there's eight stickers on the page. I'm gonna zoom in to show you this a bit closer. So we can see this is one sticker here. Uh, on the sticker, we've got our logo. You can change that over to your logo easy enough. Uh, we've got the job name, the room name, the material name, and the texture assigned to the material. That's really handy if your material is say a uh, painted material like white satin and you're going to apply a certain color or texture to it so you know what color it needs to be painted you can simply assign the correct color um, and that might be like a dulux color or something like that and then that can come through on the sticker here so you know what color to paint that coming down this is the the most important thing here is that it shows you the pattern and then highlighted here is the part that that sticker belongs to so it's very clear that this sticker here needs to be placed on that part as it comes off the cnc machine this sticker here would be placed on this part so it's very clear and easy to understand where the stickers go. You don't really need to reference another sheet or anything like that. You can just work it out simply by looking at that picture and it's very clear and easy to understand which way that is placed on. You see, you always place the sticker on the same way so you don't have to rotate it or turn it or anything like that. It's just peel and paste as it shows you in the picture here. There's also a label count there and a sheet count as well um, for reference. Across the top here, we've got the part name, the cabinet number, and then the size of the component there as well. The nice big clear picture here indicates clearly where to edge that component. And once you stick that part on, you'll see that that part is arrow is pointing towards the edge that needs to be edged. So it's very clear and simple for anyone to understand. And that way your guys can edge band those components correctly. Okay, so jumping out of the label page, I'm gonna get out of there and return back to Mosaic. Again, if you wanted to do individual parts or reprint a sheet, you can simply click into a sheet and reprint that one. Um, one nice feature here on either the label tab or the G-code tab is the ability to mark things as complete. So let's just go ahead and regenerate our G-code for all those sheets um, now that I've re-optimized everything. So I've got the 20 G-codes there ready to go. I'm going to click on sheet number one and say that this one has been marked as complete. So it does mark it as complete there. And if we go ahead back to our patterns tab, we can see that that sheet has been cut. So it's nice if you're running Mosaic on an additional seat down at the CNC. Additional seats are available for purchase. They're 25 US dollars per month. Um, and it's really easy then to set up another seat on your CNC machine or near your CNC machine. So the operator can have the ability to re-nest components or recut components and mark jobs as complete. And if you're syncing your files across um, Dropbox or OneDrive or any kind of file server, you'll be able to open the job up on your computer in the office there and see where that job's up to. So it is a really nice feature to have that ability down at the CNC machine. Back on the G-code page, we're gonna take a look at another feature here for the limit check. So I can click on any one of these sheets and then press limit check. So that's gonna show me some statistics about this sheet. It's gonna tell me the minimum maximum movements. Again, that there's safety Z features there. Um, how many lines, arcs, drills, and small components made onto that sheet? How many tool changes, the total um, feed distance in millimeters, the total repositioning distance the machine has to do to run that sheet, and the total amount of plungers, and then tallying all that up based on a time factor, telling you the total amount in minutes to run that sheet, and also what tools are being used. So again, a nice feature built in to the G-code section there. Another nice feature here is the ability to surface your spoilboard. So if you're running a basic CNC machine that doesn't have a spoilboard surface program as provided by your CNC provider, you can have Mosaic produce that. So you can click this button here and then you can choose how you want to surface that, which tool you want to surface it with and how much you want to take off when you're surfacing the spoilboard. And then the ability also to nominate the size. And then you can simply press create G-code program to export that G-code out and take that to your CNC machine. Talking about exporting files to the CNC machine, in the Mosaic's preferences, you can easily set where you'd like that location to be. So if you'd like to have a networked location where you can simply export your G-code and have that synchronized to the CNC machine, you can do that via file sharing and setting up a network, or you can do that via having the machine um, connected to some sort of file synchronization service like Dropbox or OneDrive, um, or you can just put that on a USB stick and take it down to your machine that way. Either way is fine but Mosaic gives you the choice of where you'd like to store that information. Coming down, then we're gonna take a look at the last tab, which is summary. So in the summary here, it's just simply gonna show us all the patterns, the quantity of the patterns, how many parts landed on each of those patterns, the percentage of use there, so the yield percentage, which is 
how much of, of the sheet was used um, versus how much was wasted. So you can see that a lot of the sheets here are running at the high 90%, meaning that we're wasting less than 10% of that material. And then the cost of the material according to the usage there, um, based on the factors that you put into the material costs back on the mosaic side. So next we're going to take back, go back here to the materials tab. I'm going to take a look at nesting the white satin because I'm going to show you the flip side nesting feature. So let's jump into the optimize page here and I'm going to optimize this with my MDF tool set because I'd like to use a two wing compression cutter to nest this material. I'm going to show you without sequencing the flip side parts first. That way you can get the idea of how this would look with or without that feature turned on. So I'm going to press optimize there and optimize those components. So what you can see here, all the parts that require flip side machining, meaning that all the components that are shaker doors, um, basically require manufacturing from two sides of that sheet. As we can see, some have landed on the sheet number uh, three here, some have landed on five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So most of the sheets, there's only 12 sheets in this, in this particular um, job, but the majority of them have flip side parts, meaning that I've only, there's only a few that I'm not going to have to flip over. Whereas if I go back to the optimize page and I tick the option here to sequence the flip side parts first and then press optimize, what it's going to do, it's going to make sure all those components land on the first few sheets. So what you can see here now is that I've only got four patterns that I need to do flip side machining for. Again, making it really easy to make sure that I'm not wasting time. So I've got the majority of my patterns there that I don't need to do flip side machining for. And then I've got four patterns that I do need to do it for. So when you're talking about flip side machining, it is important that you set your material size correctly and also giving yourself enough space. I'll typically do that with a bit of a higher tolerance there, depending on how clean that sheet is. You know, if you've got chipped edges on the sheet, what you're trying to do is make sure that this trim is, is enough space and that your machine's accurate enough and that your stops are accurate enough. And there's a few factors that go into it. But if I have that set to five mil there, when I go ahead and create my G-code for these patterns, I'm gonna do this now and show you. I'm gonna press generate G-code and I'm gonna turn on the option to create the flipped sheet program. So it's really easy. It's just a tick box to turn it on. And I'm gonna hit okay there. And it's gonna give me the option here of how I'd like to square that sheet up. So I'm gonna say, look, I wanna add a squaring cut. And I recommend trimming about half of the total trim value away on the squaring cut. So I'm gonna say two and a half mil. And then I'm going to choose which way I want to trim that for my machine. So potentially I want to trim the left edge and the bottom edge, or perhaps I want to trim the left edge and the top edge. Again, it depends where your stops are and how you're going to flip that over. I'm going to choose the first option. And once you do it once, you can save this as default. So that way next time you don't have to think about it and just hit okay there. And that's going to go through now and export the files. Notice that it says it's exported 17 files when we only have um, 12 sheets. So if we had a look there and we go to our G code page now, we're going to see that is because we've got other sheets that have flip side machining. So the first pattern here, the first four patterns are showing sheet number one and then sheet number one dash flip. So the dash flip program is simply a program that's going to do one side of that sheet. I'm going to show you that. So if we go back to the patterns here and if I click into the sheet and press generate G code and calculate what we're seeing here on one side of the sheet, if I can show you this a bit clearer, we've got our pocket. So we've got a a simple um, shaker cut out here where we, we're using our hogging tool to, to square out these pockets. Uh, a nice thing here, you can run a simulation to see how that's going to happen too. So you can sort of see a basic 2D simulation of how this um, tool path is going to be generated. I'm going to stop that and show you the next part of that process. So I'm cleaning up that hogging tool with a six mil down spiral, and then I'm running a 20 to and a half degree sharp corner tool around that to create a nice square finish. And you can have it do that where it squares out and lifts out the corners to give you a nice square look finish. Okay, so then this side of the sheet is actually just doing all of the, the door routes, the pockets and everything like that. And then we're cutting the components out. So this side of the sheet is the, the program number that's come up as, and it shows you down here, example job, white satin, sheet one, run one. But the other side of the sheet is the one that you're going to run on the machine first. So you always run the flip side ones first. So we go back to patterns and then we click to generate our G code. And I'm going to flip the sheet over so I can show you that again. So what we're going to see here is the simulation of this on the flip side. So on the flip side, we're getting our hinge drilling. So it's going to go through and drill all the hinge holes. And then it's going to use our compression tool to clean up the sheet where it's going to simply just run that along one short side and one long side of that sheet 
to give you a nice square edge to turn that back over and push that against your stops or pins. That's it, really, really easy. So it's just a matter of making sure that you get your sheet size correct and your trims correct, and then turn it on and away it goes. It'll create the two sides of the program, run the flip one first and then run the second side after that. And that's flip side machining made simple. Once you've done the flip side machining, you can come down here and press flip side printouts and you can choose what you want to print out there and hit OK. I'm going to print that to a PDF and then show you this as well. I'll just give that a name and open this up for you so you can see it in PDF form. So what we're going to see here, and again, I'll go to a full page. I'm going to clearly see one side of the program here. That's the, that's the pattern that you're going to uh, machine once you're ready to do the doors. But on this side, that's the flip side program. So this is the one you're going to run first. And it's showing you that it's doing that squaring cut there. And then you're seeing that that's the square edge when you run this other side of the program. So it's really easy and it does indicate what the program numbers are. So if you print them out, it's just printing out the flip side programs, making it easy for your machine operator to know what's going on. A couple more features I'm going to show you before we wrap this video up. I'm going to go back to the patterns tab. View all my patterns again. I'm going to show you something where if you're trying to line up specific components in Mosaic, it's really easy to take components, delete them off a nest and then add them onto a specific nest at the end. This is something that you might do if you're trying to sort of book match multiple cabinets across. Mosaic will grey match within the one cabinet, but if you're trying to book match across multiple cabinets, sometimes it is easier to be able to grab those components and then lay them out on a separate nest. So what I'd like to do there is show you that function. So I'm going to click on this component here and I'm going to press press delete on the keyboard. And I'm going to say, yep, let's delete that out. I'm going to say, no, don't worry about creating a buffer for the deleted part. And I'm going to delete a few components. Now, when you delete components, they're not gone for good. They actually appear over here in this unplaced parts bin. So it's just an unplaced parts list here that I can then drag and drop them back onto the screen somewhere. So I might go and view all my patterns and I'm going to simply add another sheet there. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop these components onto the sheet, moving them where I'd like, rotating them the direction I would like as well. So I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees and I might pop it up there and then say bump it left and down. And I'm going to grab another component here, drag that out. And again, I might want to do the same thing there. I might want to rotate that up, take it to the position and bump it into position. Um, you can also give it a specific location. Like if you wanted to generically be a exact X and Y coordinate for whatever reason, you can give it that coordinate there. I can also tell it if I want it to use my small part handling for this component as well. It's a couple of neat features there for sure. Um, once you've done laying that out, again, you can regenerate the G-code. So you can generate the G-code for this sheet. If I'm looking at the sheet, it will show me this G-code generation tool. Something I wanted to show you as well, because you've got the ability to reorder components here. So for whatever reason, if you wanted for, for say, the, the down spiral um, tool cut had to happen before the pocket, you can take that operation and move it up. So you can shift the order of tool paths around, which is really nice. Um, if for whatever reason you just didn't want to cut the borders of those components out, you just wanted to machine the faces and leave them uncut, you can also take that cutout and simply delete that operation. So you can delete toolpath operations individually, which is really nice. It means that you can then generate G-code because perhaps these um, components have already been cut or maybe you're just trying to put a part on there and you're going to cut it later on the saw. Or there's as many reasons where you might want to interact with the, the G-code in and the toolpath in. Um, and it's nice that you can just simply reorder them or delete out certain aspects of the code and then generate the G-code from there. Simply save that and away you go. Another nice feature there, if you've got a machine that doesn't have an auto tool changer, you can untick all tools. So that way, when you're G-coding, you're going to be G-coding a specific tool number. So I'm going to show you that now. Let's take a look at that on my G-code list. So you can see here, this one's actually that says sheet 14, tool number five, revision number three. So if you don't have an auto tool changer and your machine's only got one tool at a time that you need to manually change in and out, you can untick all tools and you can simply have Mosaic generate that tool by tool. Um, so there's a lot of features baked into Mosaic to cater for a whole variety of different CNC machines, both from the high-end, ultra, fast, auto labeling CNC machines right through to basic run of the mill desktop CNC machines. So you've got a very big variety of machines that are supported through Mosaic. Speaking of auto labelers, let's take a quick look at that. So let's jump into the 
whiteboard, I'm going to go to one of the patterns here. I'm going to click on a pattern and I'm going to show you this option here that says click to edit label positions. So I will note that auto labeling isn't a standard included feature of Mosaic. It is sold and supported per machine specifically. So most machines cost somewhere around the 750 US through to 1000 US as a one-off cost to have connected. Only certain machines are supported. So if you're unsure and you're going to purchase an auto labeler, reach out to us and ask which machines are supported and we'll happily share that information with you as it is always changing as new machines are being supported as they come out or as they've been requested. Uh, but one feature I'd like to show you here for the auto labeling is the ability to move a label. Now you might think, why would I need to move a label? Well, let's look at that example. Let's take a component and I'm just gonna edit this component. I'm gonna go to edit part, edit shape, operations and i'm going to let's just throw a big pocket in the middle of this right i'm going to say i want to pocket this from the inside out and i want to use my 40 mil pocketing tool okay um, i'm going to click on that pocket and just say look i'll just make the depth six mil deep okay real simple i can see that in 3d you can see what i've done i've just made a six mil pocket with my 40 mil tool out of there let's go now and click on edit label positions now thinking about this my label is going to be right where I'm going to pocket out. So that's not going to be very useful. So the cool thing is I can just take that label and drag it and move it to somewhere else. So now my label position is going to come out in that location there. Something that's a really cool feature in Mosaic, the ability to change where you want those label positions to be. Very hard for any software to be fully automated to never land on a particular component. It's very simple that it just always lands in the middle of the component and then you can change it manually from there if you need to. Um, so a nice feature there for sure. One nice feature too is the ability to view these components in 3D or the full sheet in 3D, I should say. So let's click on the 3D button there. 3D viewer is gonna open here and show us that sheet in 3D. So let's look at this. I'm just gonna make this a bit bigger, zoom in. So what's really nice here is that we can clearly see which holes are going through by looking at the underside of that sheet versus which holes are only going part of the way through. So it's really easy to and clear to do a nice check and to see what's going on or if any component tree or uh, tool paths are gonna clash with another part, you've got a really clear indication of these components and it's very quick to zoom in and out. You can change this to different views like a wireframe mode versus a solid mode versus a shaded mode. So you've definitely got perspectives there that you can look at. You can look at that um, top down or you could flick to a bottom up perspective or you can go back to your 3D perspective. These can all be printed out and these um, views saved or printed to a JPEG. So you've got a few options there and you can zoom that to an extent. So really nice, simple functions there. You could also take this whole sheet out and export it out as a pattern to SketchUp. Nice feature if you just want to view that in SketchUp and maybe take measurements or something like that between components. Uh, there's a lot of nice features there that you can use. Something I, I like to point out to most people as one of the things that makes Mosaic um, unique compared to most programs on the market is the ability of the what you see is what you get feature. Um, that's what I like to call it anyway. Let's click on this component and press edit part. And I'm gonna show you a really good example of that. So I'm gonna to press to edit the shape here. And I'm gonna to go to my operations. And I'm gonna add in a custom operation. So I'm just gonna click on toolpath and I'm gonna leave this as an open toolpath, okay? That shows me the four toolpath points down here. For this example, I'm just gonna delete point three and four and I'm just gonna to have two toolpaths here. So what I wanna do is just take this point here and just move it up to the top there. So I'm going to start there and then come down to there with this with this individual open toolpath that I'm creating. Now I'm going to show you this first of all. I'm going to make it 12 mil deep and I'm going to select a tool and in my tool list I'm going to select a carby tool. It's common tools in Australia here and I'm going to choose one of the uh, draw pull or j pull bits as it's known. So I'm going to click on that tool and then I'm going to show you the 3D representation of this. So again, I can make that bigger so it's a bit easier for you to see in this video. So I'm just going to make that nice and large there. Spin that around and show you this. So the what you see is what you get, as I like to call it, um, is basically showing you the result of the tool shape as it goes through the material. So that way you can get a pretty good idea of how this is going to come off your machine before you actually run this on your machine. And if you need to make that deeper, because perhaps I want to hit, I want to go deeper, so I get to the radius part of that tool, I can I can change that here. So let's have a look at what it looks like at 15 mil deep. Click in 3D again, spin that part around, and let's have another look at it. Again, I might just zoom in nice and big there. So what we can see now is that I'm getting that radius component of the tool. So I'm at a depth that actually looks like it's going to be much nicer, 
Again, so you've got the ability to see these things in 3D. It's going to make it easier for you to get things like door styles much closer to being perfect without running a bunch of tests because you can set the tool, you can see the tool length, you can see how it comes out, and then you can run it on the machine. Um, you can also see that, and it does warn me there that, hey, that's outside the part. You know, are you happy with that? So it does give you some warnings there. And then I'm going to show you this in 3D on the full sheet. So again, you can see that as an individual component, or you can see that on the full sheet as well. Um, so there's nice functions where you can control those kind of things. Um, also, same deal with, with doors, perhaps like I'm going to show you this on this particular door here. I'm going to go into edit, edit shape and, and operations. I'm going to click on this operation here. Now, at the moment, I've got my pocketing tool set as my 40 more hogging tool, and I've got a shaker toolpath um, set there. All these different toolpaths can be custom created by you. So we've got a few sample ones in there for you, um, but you can create different styles. And really all it is is combinations of tools at different offsets and depths to give you a certain style. And the really cool thing is once you change it, you can see it before you machine it. So again, if I choose a certain group here of tools and I can click on that in 3D and I can take a look at it, I'm gonna see how that's gonna turn out. So it's gonna give me an idea of that shape and how that's gonna look before I even run it. And if you wanna create your own versions, it's really easy. You just go into library, CNC tooling, panel tool groups, and then you can create these groups here. So looking at this example, this is just a simple example of four tools or three different tools set at four different locations. So we've got a tool here that's got a nice um, core box end there, a rounded end, and then we've got a, a more of a beading style tool that's coming in. And just to zoom in nice and close here and show you this, so our panel tool or our core box tool is coming in and creating that round shape. And then we're flattening out this side of the shape with the beading tool. And then we're coming in and getting a tighter finish on that bead with this step up here. And then we're bringing that up again to give us a nice tighter corner there as it steps away. So visualizing this, we're just looking through the door, looking at these tools. And if I show you that in 3D, the result of running those four tools would look like this. So, you know, if you want to create your own door designs, it's really easy. You just, you just have to have the tool in for it, create the tools in Mosaic, um, simply add the tools in and add the shape of your tool. That way you can have these tools loaded in tool groups, and then you can create your own door designs. You can also have edge tool groups where you want to run around the outside edge of the door. That can be used for doing things like simple pencil edging on doors, or it can be used for more complex edging where you're running a certain tool to give you a certain profile, or maybe the same tool multiple times, again, to give you a different type of appearance. And that's going to give you like a beaded sort of look there. Um, again, there's, there's various tools that you've got in the optimizer that's going to give you everything you need to manufacture your work successfully. It's really well laid out and really well thought out and also really well documented. So you can click on that question mark there. And again, you can read documentation on what each of these points are and how to utilize this to get success in using Mosaic. So there are all the reasons why for me, Mosaic is the best value for money and not even best value for money, but honestly the best solution in the industry for cabinet making if you're looking at running a CNC machine. You just can't beat what this can do. The speed of the optimizer, the level of features, the remake components, the ability to edit your parts, ability to edit your sheets. And one thing I haven't even shown you yet is that all of this is simply saved. So, you know, if I was to then say, look, okay, if I wanna close out of this and just close the optimizer down and press save, yes, I definitely wanna hit yes to that question. That's gonna close the optimizer down and return me back to Mosaic. I'm gonna go view and open the optimizer again. And what you're gonna see there is that that's gonna open up the optimizer. I'm just gonna drag this over so you can see it. Then I'm gonna resize that up again so you can see that a bit clearer. So what we're looking at there is we're back exactly where we left off. You haven't lost anything. You haven't had to re-optimize anything. If you've printed out certain patterns or you've cut certain parts or you've got your G-code there, you can get back to all of it. You haven't lost anything. It's not disposable. Um, it's saved there. And then if you need to redo work you know, five years later for a job that you need to recut a certain component, you can go back to that exact nest, grab that component and remake it. And that's something that I haven't seen on any other software. You know, most of the programs in the market, when you close out of them, that's it, they're gone. You need to re-nest them. 
remake them and you've lost all the information with mosaic everything's stored and kept there and saved there for you it's easy laid out buttons that are clearly defined anyone can pick this up and use this and anyone will be able to use this successfully thank you for watching i appreciate you taking the time to review the mosaic optimizer with me if you have any questions feel free to reach out i'll happily answer them if you've enjoyed this video please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can continue watching content as we publish it once again thank you for watching i'm david carr from cadmate the australian and new zealand representative of mosaic software and i appreciate you taking the time to watch this video